how would things be for you if you had a guaranteed way to manage your fear? If when situations arise and opportunities or challenges present themselves, you could comfortably and confidently take them on. If that rising heat and stomach churning didn't happen. I'm Michelle Henshaw, coach and mentor to heart-driven business leaders, coaches, people helpers, light workers, and spiritual and sensitive entrepreneurs. And today I want to give you some proven methods for conquering fear so that you can get brave and visible in your business and so that you can confidently walk your own path and have a business that provides the life you dream of. We're transitioning right now into a new paradigm, the age of Aquarius that we spiritual entrepreneurs have been waiting for. But we have to be ready to step up and be seen to really make the change the world needs. I've been talking to my clients a lot recently about Transition Bridge, the bridge that'll take us from the old way of things to the new. Now, if you haven't already seen that video, please do go and check it out. You can find it on here. It's definitely worth a watch. A couple of things to know about Transition Bridge. One, we have to pack the right things for the journey. Two, we have to be ready to set up our stall when we get there, when we get to the other side. And three, and probably most importantly, we have to be willing to cross in the first place. There are a few things that might lead us, uh, leave us left behind in the old paradigm, but without a doubt, the biggest is fear being afraid of change, of the unknown, of the crowds and noise on the other side. Now to manage fear, we really have to get up close and personal with it, really understand it. So what is fear anyway? We all think we're all too familiar with fear, but do we really know it? Well, fear is a biochemical and a physiological response, a feeling that comes from a neurological chain of events our thoughts. You see, our neurological response mechanism doesn't know the difference between what's real and what's imagined. It's our thoughts that trigger the response. But poor old fear gets a bit of a bad rep, if you ask me. It isn't always here to harm us. It isn't always a bad thing. I mean, we wouldn't even exist as a species if our ancestors on the savannah hadn't felt fear and responded to it, right? They'd have all been eaten by lions and the human race would be extinct. Reserve your judgment on that right now. <laughs> we're all glad we're here, right? But seriously, if we didn't feel fear, we'd all go around walking into fires and jumping off tall buildings. The thing is this, we've been feeling fear and acting on it for so long, thousands of years, that it's deeply, deeply embedded. And we still go around behaving as if we might be eaten by lions any minute, whenever it shows up. Now, particularly in the West, we really no longer face things every day that threaten our very existence. Even this threat we're facing now is the first thing in decades, maybe longer, that really makes us feel that our lives are at risk. And even this will pass. It's already passing. And yet we apply the same ancestral, biological and neurologically inherited reactions and responses and behaviours to things that can't threaten our lives. Things like change, uh, unwanted attention, public speaking, getting on camera, add your own thing to the list. So what do we usually do? Well, usually we freeze, we run away, we avoid, we hide. Why? Well, we've just not adapted. We've never been taught not to be afraid. In fact, quite the opposite. Often with good intention and for our protection, our parents, guardians, teachers, etc. teach us to be fearful way before they teach us to be brave. How many times have you heard an adventurous child referred to as reckless or knowing no fear and told, stop, don't do that? Sometimes it's protection, but often I think if we're honest, it's just us projecting our own fears and then on and on and on from generation to generation it goes. 
But fear only really becomes a problem, a negative thing, when we allow it to stop us in our tracks. When we allow it to stop us living our purpose, walking our path, shining our light, stop us from serving those we're here to serve. But the fantastic news is we can change our relationship with fear. So I want to share with you some things I take my clients through when we create their life path based on my own experience that are always powerful for them and that I know will help you too. So one is recognize. We'll go into these in a bit more detail later. Two is acknowledge and three is reframe. We can do that with our old friend fear. Isn't it appropriate that acronym is RA? RA! I only realised that when I was preparing this video, uh, but very appropriate. So let me tell you a little bit about my journey and my relationship with fear and how I came to create my own life path. Just so that you can understand how this stuff works and that it works. Because I can tell you that my life now in no way resembles the life I once had. I'm an only child and I grew up alone with my violent, paranoid, schizophrenic mum from the age of four till I was about 12. Every single day for me was crammed with uncertainty and horror, physical and emotional abuse, the unpredictability of my mother's condition. Fear was pretty much my constant and welcome companion. My mum banished my dad from our home when I was four years old and my whole life imploded. He was my world, my protector, my coach. We had no extended family, no friends. My mum was also a Jehovah's Witness and so non-Jehovah's Witness friends weren't allowed. And so apart from the dog, <laughs> I really was alone. Now, understandably, I think, I developed a stress stammer I became severely introverted or shy, as they called it then. And because of my stammer and my shyness and my mother's condition and religion, on and on and on, I was a natural target for bullies. So school was hell. I couldn't speak up and I didn't stand up for myself. So I was bullied at home and I was bullied away from home. Now, I found solace in books. I spent every available moment in the library. Books allowed me to discover new worlds, new ways. They allowed me to escape and they also gave me inspiration. I read about lives that were different to mine and I saw possibilities. And one particular book changed everything for me. The autobiography of Helen Keller. Helen was left deaf blind and mute after a bout of polio when she was two years old. She completely withdrew from the world and became angry and physically aggressive because she was scared. But someone came into Helen's life that changed everything, her tutor Anne Sullivan. She saw the magic, the fire and the potential in Helen and she believed in her and she believed enough in her to help her and she showed herself her own, she held up a mirror to her magic and her potential. Now Helen went on to earn two degrees, become a public speaker, a philanthropist, an activist, fighting for the rights of others like her. It was a wow moment for me. If Helen could change her life, I was sure I could. Well, I didn't have an Anne Sullivan, and so I set about becoming my own tutor, my own co coach, studying people, learning about myself. I did the work constantly and consistently. I read and read and I started to write too. And in my writing, I created a different version of myself, a confident, self-assured, brave version of me. And then one day, lo and behold, I started to believe it. I started to realise my value and I decided I'd had enough. Enough of being scared, enough of hiding, enough of playing small. And the next time my mother raised her hand to hurt me, I grabbed it and shouted, enough. I was 12 years old. Well, then I ran. Well, <laughs> come on, a 12 year old doesn't have many options, does she? But I knew I was running towards freedom. Something had shifted changed within me and I just knew that my relationship with fear was changed forever. I knew my life was going to be different. I haven't shaken fear off entirely, she's still with me 
but the power has shifted. I have control now, I'm in charge. I check in with fear now and then for my own protection, but I make the decisions. I think it was JK Rowling that said, rock bottom is a great foundation on which to build. And someone else more qualified than me said, you have nothing to fear but fear itself. So let me share with you how I changed my relationship with fear and what I discovered about how and why we react and respond to it the way we do. Well, as well as the obvious and logical fear around this disease that we're dealing with at the moment, we might also be feeling fear around the unknown. Nobody really knows what the future holds at the moment. Financial security, changing the way you live, changing the way you do business. So many of us are having to think about getting more visible than ever before and about stepping up. And that can bring up fear, especially for those of us who are usually high touch, high frequency in our work, as I think a lot of heart-centered, heart-driven entrepreneurs are, right? But having a business means getting seen and heard, being visible. Having a purpose means being seen and heard. So you'll need to be brave, but how? Well, let me offer you three things. Let me offer you that, rah, <laughs> right? So recognize when that voice in your head and that feeling in your gut show up, first ask yourself this question. Is this here to serve me or to hold me back? Then acknowledge, acknowledge fear's role and contribution. She's not the bad gal. If you don't face any real immediate danger, thank fear for trying to protect you, but tell her, it's okay, I've got this, and send her to her room. Reframe fear and excitement. Remember fear and excitement have the same biological formula. Physiologically and biochemically, they're the same. It's the thoughts we attach to them that make them either positive or negative. So reframe by changing the thoughts. How? Few ways. Practice great self-talk. Big yourself up and ask others to big you up too. Catch the thought before it manifests. Recognize it. Affirm. Affirmations are really powerful for the neuroplasticity. Try reframing thoughts like, I can't, I don't know how, what if it doesn't work, with things like, I'm excited about doing something new. I'm excited to have new experiences, or um, I love learning new things. Feel free to add your own in your own words, of course, whatever works for you. And the final thing I wanna leave you with is this. Sometimes all the learning absorbing, planning and affirming in the world isn't nearly as powerful as just deciding. Enough. I've had enough. And I am enough. A bit like learning to swim, sometimes you just got to hold your nose and dive in. So I really hope you've been able to take something from this that you can use to transform your thinking and feeling around fear that will enable you to be brave enough to step up to your visibility because the new world, the new paradigm needs what you have to offer and needs spiritual, mindful, heart-centered people and businesses to lead the way forward. Remember what Joseph Campbell says, the cave you fear to, to enter holds the treasure you seek. So let me know what your thoughts and feelings are around fear now. Reach out if you need support and please don't forget to hit subscribe before you go. Oh, and please share this video so that others can be done with fear, done with it holding them back. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.